everyone, and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, and this is episode 181. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for checking out my podcast. Uh, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, and general craftiness happening in Brooklyn, New York, where I live. So thank you for joining me. Uh, as always, I am also known as Vine on Ravelry and pretty much everywhere else on the web, especially Instagram. And there is a Yarngasm Ravelry group. So if you have not joined, please do. There's lots of chatter happening in there. Um, and yeah, it's the best way to contact me uh, if you have a question about the show. So, but yes, I have a lot to talk about this week. Uh, thank you to everybody so much for all the birthday wishes uh, this past week. Uh, it was my birthday on Sunday, so it was really nice to hear from all of you uh, and just get all those messages. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think what else is going on. I had such a really wonderful response to my shawl pattern that I am going to be publishing in March. I believe I'm, I'm aiming for March 1st and there were just so many people wanting to test knit that um, it just blew me away. So I really generally genuinely appreciate it um, if you offered to test knit. I am good. <laughs> I think I have about eight test knitters now. So yes, uh, that is the the Test knitting is underway and I could not ask for better test knitters and, and I did want to correct myself uh, in the last week. I call, The pattern is called Wildes Meer, which is Wild Sea, translated from German, uh, and I had called it Wildemir, <laughs> which as you can tell I am still learning German, uh, but it, it is still a very special language to me that I'm intent on learning. Uh, so you can tell that I'm still learning, uh, but yes, thank you to everybody who reached out to me and corrected me on that little error right there. So, um, but yes, the pattern is Vildes Mir. Um, and I'm very excited about it and I'm so glad that you guys are. So stay tuned for that. That is coming down the pike. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Yeah. So I have nothing off the needles, uh, this week. I feel all last week's episode kind of made up for that since I had like three different things off the needles. Uh, but since then I have, a couple of other things on the needles that I have cat has have since cast on, um, and I feel like I'm leaving something. Oh, I remember the uh, box of socks. Cal is underway as well. Um, it's a year long knit along that I'm hosting, and basically the idea is to fill a box of socks. Any box it could be a shoe box. It could be a filing box, like I have. I did not bring it with me. It's over there, and I'm not gonna go reach for it. Um, but um, yeah, just the idea is a uh, fill box with gorgeous hand knit socks and I will close the thread on January 1st, 2017. Um, and yeah, there, there's a thread for that too as well in the Ravelry group and it's every time I look at it, there's like 30 new posts in there. So yeah, it's, it's happening. Um, so, and yeah, it kicked off on January. So the minimum is uh, 12 socks. So like one pair of socks a month and yeah, but feel free to knit as many as you'd like. And I have two pairs of socks on the needles right now. I showed off a pair that I finished last week, but um, I had cast on, and this is in my Chia Gu uh, project bag that I got at Vogue Knitting Live. Um, I love this bag, they're so fun, uh, with lots of llamas on it. And if you saw, I posted something on Instagram about how I finally cast on a pair of two at a socks, two at a time socks, uh, which is where you knit two socks at the same time on the same magic loop needle. Um, I have since separated the two, uh, so now I'm just knitting one sock at a time. Uh, I gave it a try. I, I mean, I totally get the concept. It's brilliant. By the, by the time you're done knitting, you have a whole pair of socks. You don't have to worry about second sock syndrome and you're all good. Um, but <laughs> I was finding the process a little glacial, so to speak. Uh, it just wasn't I just felt like I wasn't making any progress. You know how like when you knit a sweater and you find yourself in the black hole of sweater knitting, it, you just keep knitting and knitting and it just feels like it's not growing. That's how I felt knitting two at a time socks. I, I mean, I was knitting at my normal pace and everything, but it just felt so fiddly shifting all the stitches over. And um, I guess that's how some people feel about Magic Loop, but with two socks on the go at, at the same time, I just felt like I was getting nowhere. And so I just, yeah, I just called it quits, separated them, and now they're on two separate needles. So here I have <laughs> my, um, this is the yarn that I purchased at, uh, in Italy, uh, in Venice, at Le La Bella. 
And many of you have been asking me about this yarn, and this is Cessia Mistral. I called it Minstrel last time, uh, and I was wrong. It's Mistral, M-I-S-T-R-A-L, baby. And it's a numbered colorway, which I... I think it's 162 or 626, I don't know. I will post it in the show notes. Um, but yes, this is very hard to find in the US. Uh, but I, when I was at Layla Bella, um, the lady at the shop in the shop said, you know, feel free to contact me if you need any more yarn. I'm, I'll be happy to ship it overseas. So I will post a link to her, her, um, her yarn shop in the show notes. So anybody interested in this yarn has a means of obtaining it so um if you don't mind paying for shipping but yeah it is quite hard to find in the states unless you can find somebody who wants to de-stash it um but yeah anyway so i'm knitting a pair of socks just a plain basic vanilla pair and this is how it's knitting up um just a plain one by one ribbing cuff down and it's gonna have a fish lips kiss heel because it's self-striping i'm not into doing afterthought heels or i yes and no i don't know i like the fact that uh, and after, um, I don't like the fact that afterthought heels, you have to just keep knitting and knitting and knitting and then put the heel in. Um, I find that kind of monotonous and I like the way that fish lip, like the fish lips kiss heel, um, kind of breaks things up or any heel in general, aside from the afterthought heel, if that makes any sense. But, um, yeah, this is how it's sitting up. And I have these on my DPNs or one sock on my, um, carbons, uh, DPNs, which is a U.S. size 1.5 or 2.5 millimeter, um, double pointed needle. So, and it's flying. It's going so much quickly, so much more quickly uh, than it was on when I was doing it two at a time. Um, and just to prove that I was doing two at a time, here's the other sock on, on my, uh, <laughs> on my 40 inch circulars, same needle size, same brand, uh, carbons. So yeah, this is how far I got. And then as soon as I took it off the needle, it was like, Psh. yeah. So I will stick to my one at a sock time, sock knitting ways. So everyone's different. There's no right or wrong way. It's just who I am as a knitter and I'm not questioning that. So I'm just going with it. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so that is one sock. Um, and oh, I have also received a request to do a uh, fish lips kiss heel tutorial. I'm a little gray on the area of doing a tutorial on fish lips kiss heel only because it's a paid pattern. Um, and it's a long pattern and a lot of people are intimidated by it. Uh, I believe it, the entire pattern is 18 pages long. And I will admit I was very intimidated when I first looked at the pattern. Uh, it, again, it's 18 pages long and there's a whole tutorial on how to do a cardboard cutout of your foot and all this extra info. Uh, but the truth is you only need one page, depending whether or not you're doing a toe up or cuff down, sock uh you only need one page out of that entire pattern and the rest and the rest is all theory extra info and extra information for your reading pleasure essentially uh and you do not need to do a cardboard cutout uh the only reason i could see you do needing to do a cardboard cutout is if you are knitting socks for someone other than yourself like uh your parent or your significant other or you know and you want to save their uh, sh their foot info, like the size of their foot and everything. So you have that as a reference. You can pull it out and just, you know, measure as you go, as you're knitting the sock, uh, just as a little file, if you will. Um, I certainly do not have a cardboard cut out of my foot. I've memorized the pattern and it's all a matter of doing a, uh, I think it's a two versions of a twin stitch. There's a knit twin stitch and a purl twin st stitch. And <clears throat> that they're, it's all short rows, so that's all there is to it, and I will be more, I actually filmed it. Uh, I did film a tutorial of me showing you how to do the, the two stitches, because I found the one that um, okay, Socks Therapist provided was a little confusing to me, and I, it, I had to do a little digging to figure out how to um, make that twin purl stitch. That's where I was getting uh, caught up on uh, how to make that twin purl stitch work for me. And um, so yeah, I will be posting that shortly, but I'm not, because it's a paid pattern, I'm not going to do the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> um, just, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. So, um, but yeah, anyway, excuse me, let me take a sip of my tea. Uh, in my teacup today, since we're on the topic, it's getting really blown out. I'm, oh, this is the wrong side. 
But this is a teacup I rescued from my grandmother's basement. It came in a set of four. So it's like each cup has um, different birds on it. I fell in love with them. I, I had to take them home with me. But um, in my teacup is um, my, my parents-in-law, Carolyn Ron, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> they spoiled me for my birthday and I will show you what they what they got for me in, um, in Treat Yourself. Uh, but they did get me some tea as well from Tevana. And I have never tried Tevana before, but this flavor is amazing. I'm already more than halfway through the bag, so that says a lot, but it's uh, the cocoa caramel sea salt flavor. And I believe they're actually little bits of uh, chocolate and yeah, there's coconut in it and little slices of orange. It's just amazing. And the first time I made this, I put sugar in it and it really didn't even need it. It's just so like sweet on its own. And it's just so, so, so good. And I, like, it was worthy of me whipping out my, my teapot. So I made myself a little, little teapot of this delicious chocolate, uh, chocolate, <laughs> chocolate tea. It's so, so good. Um, but anyway, yes. Um, okay, so what else is on my needles? Uh, in my Mia Makes Project bag with my kitties curled up into little balls playing around, um, is my other sock that I cast on using my yarn. Uh, this is on my footsie base, uh, which is in the Love Song colorway, and my, one of my Valentine's Day colorways. But I am actually going to be turning this into a regular colorway because I'm just so smitten with it. Um, and yeah, I cast on a pair of monkey socks, which is an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, it's a pattern by Cookie A. It's free to download on Ravelry. It's actually a knitty pattern, one of the early knitty uh, .com patterns. Um, I forget which year, but anyway, here it is. I'll knit up and I am so smitten with the way this is knitting up. It is just like, you know, patterned uh, socks, it's very hit or miss with variegated yarns, but for some reason, the monkey socks, they really make variegated colorways pop or shine, whatever you want to call it. I just really, really love it. Um, and I did a fish lips kiss heel. And again, these are on some carbons, US 1.5s, 2.5 millimeter. And yeah, they're flying. And I've already memorized the stitch pattern. So I, it's just flying right now, uh, which is something that I remember about knitting my first pair of monkey socks. Um, out of some Rhinebeck yarn that I purchased, I think like the second year I went to Rhinebeck or third year, I don't remember, but it was a fiber optic. It was a, this really wonderful green shade of fiber optic yarn and I wore them to death and I most more recently like chucked them because they felted and they had a lot of love. So, you know, as a uh, Karen from Ron, the twist podcast says, you know, the way I darn my socks is I hold them over the, over the wastebasket and say, oh darn, and drop them in. <laughs> and that is exactly what happened. It was very sad, but it had to be done. They could not be saved. But anyway, um, yeah, so that is also on my needles. Um, so yeah, my, my box of socks is growing by leaps and bounds, apparently. And I know last year I said, this is going to be the year of bigger projects. I'm not going to waste my time on socks, but when you're a sock knitter, you're a sock knitter and you might as well just embrace it, right? Yeah. So anyway, those are my socks this week. <laughs> um, the other thing that I cast on, I finally bit the bullet. I was kind of he humming and hawing, like, do I want to do this? Do I really want to just get into it or, you know, but as I mentioned, I went to Vogue Knitting Live and fell in love with the doodler shawl. I was a little on the fence about it when I saw it online, but seeing it in person, I was just like, all right, I got to knit this thing. So I cast it on last night. And of course, I'm grabbing it from my desk. Um, of course, I had to knit it out of my, my hand dyed yarn. So <laughs> um, here it is right now. This is on Volca, uh, Merino, my uh, fingering weight four ply Merino nylon cashmere blend. Uh, and if you know my yarns, you can probably guess what these are. This uh, speckled variegated colorway right here is Enjoy the Silence. And then the green stripe is uh, Venus Flytrap. And I just, I'm really enjoying the construction of this. I mean, it's, I love that it looks like a wing. 
and it kind of bummed me out when I found out like the overall look of it. I was kind of hoping for it to be like these dragonfly wings, if you will. But yeah, otherwise, I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this knits up because it's just so awesome and fun to knit so far. Um, but yeah, here, here are these two colorways caked up. And then it's going to go, the third and final color is going to go with succulents. So I think those will go really well together. And yeah, um, so I'm having, so far, so good. I'm, I'm having fun with it. And again, I'm not a fan of mystery knit alongs, which is why I did not take part. And like, it, it's again, it, it's very hit or miss with Stephen West <laughs> for me. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I, I'm happy that I waited. I'm, and you know, didn't really, cause I know a lot of people joined in on the knit along and then kind of lost steam midway or they just weren't into it anymore. Um, but I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it now. So yeah, um, I'm interested to see how it knits up for me. Uh, so yeah, and I'm knitting those on size US uh, four needles. I don't know what that is in millimeters, but I think I have a needle on my desk. Uh, yeah, okay, so four, US four is a 3.5 millimeter needle, um, FYI. So, um, and I think that is it for what's off on my needles. Um, okay, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about are podcasts that I've been watching. Just, you know, I feel like I should create a separate segment because I have been binge watching podcasts like you would not believe. This is what I do now. I don't know. I mean, I've always watched podcasts, but I feel like now it's, they keep me company during the day while I work. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, feel the need to give them shout outs and thank them for keeping me sane because yeah, again, I don't leave the house unless I need sustenance. You know, it's just one of those things. And I'm totally cool with that. I, you know, again, introvert, you know, unless I have to get forage for food, I, I stay home and I'm, I'm fine. But, um, yeah, it does get quiet. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, Anyway, I just wanted to mention these podcasts because they are awesome, and if you haven't heard of them, you should totally check them out. Um, I was I was watching Eric from the uh, Six Plus Twine podcast, another great podcast you should check out. Uh, Eric is awesome. He's based in Canada, and hi, Eric. I hope you're uh, doing well and awesome, and yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that was weird. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, he had mentioned uh, Inside Number 23, uh, hosted by Miss Lavelli, who I'm very familiar with on Instagram. She always comments or, you know, you know, posts on Instagram and occasionally we, you know, go back and forth. But, um, I did not realize that she had a podcast and it is amazing. And it's called Inside Number 23. And she does this thing where it's, you know, she's, I mean, she's just, she has a personality where it's like, she's excited and, um, she has a very retro aesthetic, if you will, uh, which I love because I, as you know, like if you watch any of my earlier episodes, I went through this whole fifties phase where I was doing my hair every day, doing the makeup, the red lipstick and everything, um, just to make it fun to go to work every day. <laughs> so, um, you know how that goes, but I definitely go through like different fashion phases, but I could totally like, I, I'm totally into it because she does like the retro fashion thing, which I love. So if you're into that, definitely check it out. Um, and I believe she's in London. I could be totally wrong but um yeah she's wonderful and she's an amazing sewist as well she's always sewing something which is kind of the reason she kicked my or, uh, after watching her podcast a couple of days ago she is the reason why I got the urge to sew again I know I went through kind of like a little lull with my sewing and I was like eh, I'll get to that you know because I wanted to do the ultimate wrap dress which I'm wearing and I'll talk about in the sewing segment um but yeah I'm like you know what I have the pattern I have the fabric I'm just gonna do it, you know, let's, let's get this done because I really want it to happen. So, but yeah, she kind of kicked me in the butt to kind of motivate me to, do, to finally get that done. So, but anyway, her podcast is lovely. Do check it out. Um, and yeah, so hi, Miss Lavelli, how are you? <laughs> um, but yeah, she's definitely got a great personality and she's funny. Uh, she does little sound effects too, just for fun on her podcast. Um, but yes, and then there is Stress Knits with Stacy. Um, who I've been in contact with for a while on Ravelry, but again, I live under a log and I had no idea she had a podcast. I'm sure she told me at some point, but you know, there are like a million podcasts out there and it's kind of hard to like keep track of all of them. Um, but she posted this, uh, photo on Instagram and in the Volan Vine Yarns thread about her, uh, blanket of, spiral blanket of awesomeness using 
all of my yarn, all of my hand dyed yarn, which I was totally blown away with. And she goes, oh, by the way, I talk about it in my podcast. I just, I wanted to see it I was, because it's, it's amazing. So, um, and she's adorable guys. I mean, yeah, Stacy, you're adorable and I really enjoy your podcast and I totally subscribed, you know, it, it, she's just really fun to watch. And I've only watched one episode so far, but it's called the Stress Knits podcast. I think, uh, Jenny from Tiny Paper Fox has talked about it on her podcast, but yeah, Stacy is really, really awesome and she does a lot of great knitting projects as well. So check her out. And then, uh, the other one that I've been watching or just started watching is, um, the Yarn Parlor, hosted by Alex, and funny story, um, Alex used to work with uh, my, a friend of mine who actually designed my wedding dress, <laughs> so it was funny to get an email from her saying, you know, wow, small world, hey, I used to know your friend Amy, and I was like, because <laughs> she saw the photo that I posted of the, the cardigan that I was fixing with the mop holes and everything, and um, I was like, well, it's so great to know that you're a knitter, and you know, um, anyway, we did a, you know, we, we chatted a little bit, and then, um, and she's like, oh, by the way, I have a podcast. I'm like, of course you do. So um, I checked that out yesterday, and she's really cool as well. Um, it's funny, though, because uh, Alex is extremely chill. You know, she's very, like, laid back, you know, very calm on her podcast as she talks about things. Um, and she's actually knitting a doodle or two. But when you see the yarn that she works with, it's, like, the total opposite because she's so into the neons and the bright, crazy colors. And it's, like, a total contrast from, you know, like, hi, you know, like this calm pers persona that she has so but yeah she's really great to watch as well so check those out um and the last one that I want to mention has nothing to do with knitting at all but I've just been binge watching it like crazy because Maria my friend uh from Subway Knits <laughs> um mentioned to me that you know, mentioned the uh Stuff Mom Never Told You uh podcast hosted by Kristen and um oh, I can't remember her other name I of course I remember Kristen because that's hello my name but um there's another host as well it's two girls and it's very feminine feminist slanted um but they don't go crazy it's not like you know all about feminism or anything but they they talk about women topics or female issues um you know just world every about everything like worldly blah, 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 worldly things and they are hilarious and I can I get a kick out of them every episode that I listen to um they did a podcast on Queen Victoria who is totally fascinating I want to read like a whole biography on her she's just a really interesting woman um and her life was anyway I digress but um yeah and they talk about just like social media and you know women and how you know like negotiating and what else did they talk about um just like real pop culture as well um just really interesting topics and it, they just they've been keeping me company while i die yarn these days because you know i can't really watch a screen while i'm dying so you know just having them in the background is you know cracking me up and laughing and really fun and again it's called uh what is it stuff mom never told you is that it i want to make sure yeah, Stuff Mom Never Told You, and they're an offshoot of HowStuffWorks.com, so you can go to their website, I think it's StuffMomNeverToldYou.com, again, show notes, um, but you can backtrack of all their episodes, and they do like, oh, they also did a documentary on Betty Page, which is really cool, um, anyway, so yeah, those are the podcasts that I've been watching this past week, uh, I definitely recommend that you check them out, um, okay, so, <laughs> lots of talking, um, I'm going to move on to treat yourself. Uh, it's because it has been my birthday and some gifts were bestowed upon me. Um, and I've also treated myself to some stuff and yeah, so I, I, will, I let me, let me share those with you. Shall I? <laughs> okay. So, um, the first one that I got is Ply Magazine. Uh, I've never purchased a copy of Ply Magazine before and I had been watching or listening to the uh, Sweet Georgia Show, a host, a podcast by uh, Felicia Lowe, the creator and dyer behind uh, Sweet Georgia Yarns, and she had interviewed J.C. Boggs Faulkner, and who is the editor of Ply Magazine, all about spinning, and they do different themes. It's a quarterly magazine. They do different themes every month, every uh, every quarter of the year, and uh, she interviewed J.C. Boggs Faulkner, um, who I love. I took a, a, a craftsy class with her, and I was just you know, like you, like you do, you're inspired and, um, just enabled to purchase these things. So I cannot wait to, I, this just came yesterday. Um, so I cannot wait to just dig into this. 
Uh, the only really lame thing that happened uh, is <laughs> totally not their fault. Um, but I had emailed them, you know, because I knew this would happen. I knew for a fact that this something like this would happen. Um, but when I placed the order, I left, left a note in the notes to seller you know, the little box before you check out. And I requested kindly uh, for them to put it in some weatherproof material. And they, they put it in a, you know, a sturdy um, standard uh, cardboard mailer, uh, you know, that you get at the post office. But of course, yesterday it was downpour. It was a downpour. It was raining like crazy. And of course, the mail lady just dumps our package, our, my packages on the stoop and in the rain. Uh, you know, she just doesn't even ring the doorbell or anything like that. I just heard her plop something in front of my door and then walk off. And I open the door and there's a package there and then there's my ply magazine in the in the box just sopping wet. So I don't know if you can, it's really unfortunate, but you know when you get those magazines with the, that are really good quality and you're excited about it, you want it to be in kind of like mint condition. Um, it's fine. It's dry. It's not totally damaged or anything. I know I could probably email them and request another one, but why waste it? I don't know. It's fine. Um, but yeah, it's just still a little, you can tell like it's a little water affected, but anyway, very excited to get it and read through it. Um, it's beautiful. And again, the quality is just absolutely stunning. And look at that handsome sheep. Can't go wrong with air. I mean, I honestly, I think they should start doing center folds of sheep in, in these types of magazines. But anyway, personal opinion. Um, <laughs> so anyway, but yes, the other thing, um, on, when was it? Saturday, uh, the day before my birthday, I, uh, Dennis and I had driven up to visit my grandmother, which I'll talk about in Blather. Um, but then afterwards we met up with my in-laws, uh, Carol and Ron. So hi. And they spoiled me rotten. I kid you not. Um, I, they, I did a little happy dance when I got this because I was not expecting it. But for New Year's Eve, uh, or for, I think New Year, around New Year's, they went up to Cape Cod uh, to check on the summer house. And, you know, just every year, Cape Cod, they have a New Year's celebration, like everywhere else in the world. <laughs> but the thing that they do there is that they drop a cod. You know how in New York City they drop the ball? They drop the cod. So there's a cherry picker or a crane, and there's like this fiberglass cod that's lit up and... At 12 midnight, they drop the cod and they have photos to prove it. So I don't know, maybe I'll, if they send me a photo of it, um, I will share that on Instagram. But, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so they surprised me with some yarn. Uh, they had went to a great yarn, that yarn shop that I talked about several episodes, many episodes ago, uh, over the summer, I had checked it out. Um, it was a new yarn shop that opened up in Chatham, um, in Chatham, Cape Cod. And they got me some really nice needles, these Zen needles, uh, which are really cool because uh, I have been knitting on the Cubics, Knitter Spread Cubics, which are square shaped, uh, but these are triangular. Yeah. So, and they are satin finished handcrafted ebony double point knitting needles um, by fabulousyarn.com. And they're US size twos uh, and three. 0.0 millimeter. So uh, when I say triangular, think of cubics, but they have like a triangular shape to them. So I have not even opened these yet, but I don't even want to take them out yet because I have no idea what I'm going to knit with them. Um, I don't know if you can even see that, but yeah, they're just three side. They're three side. They have three facets to them. So really cool. I'm interested to see how these uh, knit knit. Um, so yeah, those are really cool to get. Um, and the other cool thing that I have, I've seen these before. Um, Chiagu makes them and I'm sure a couple of other brands make them, but I've never tried them out myself. Um, but these are not nine inch circulars, the same size, US size shoes. Um, but they have a really short cable and these are mainly used to knit socks. Uh, because you don't have to switch needles. You can just knit in the round and around and around and around. And I am so excited about these. These are going to be really fun to try out. So uh, very exciting. Um, and these are by Chiaogu. So Chiaogu. And the other cool thing is, um, as I mentioned, uh, I don't know if I even mentioned it, but uh, A Great Yarn does this thing where they uh, 
they have themes like they they have dyers or indie dyers uh, dye up these uh, one of a kind colorways based on a theme, which is really cool. And when I had gone there, they had a whole hydrangea theme because hydrangeas are super popular. Uh, every garden you go to when you go to Cape Cod has hydrangeas. So they did a hydrangea colorway, which was beautiful. Um, and when my in laws had gone up there, there's a movie that's being released, um, and or it, it is a book, but um, they're coming out with a movie and. I'm not, I have to do a little bit more research. I don't know if it takes place in Cape Cod or whatever, but they reached out to Hot Knit Yarns and uh, I think, yeah, and uh, they had asked her to create a colorway based on this book and the movie called The Finest Hours by Michael J. Douglas. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael J. Uh, Tugayas. Um, so they sent me a little article from one of the newspapers uh, just to illustrate what it is. And she did this really cool colorway. Uh, they gave me two skeins of this, but um, uh, yes, it's Hot Knit Yarns uh, and the colorway is called Finest Hours and it's a one of a kind. Here's her label, her logo. Um, and she has an Etsy shop as well, but it's such a beautiful speckled uh, skein of just different blues and grays and yeah. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this, but I have two skeins to work with, so I don't know. It's really beautiful. Um, yeah, so very, very exciting to get. Thank you so much, Carolyn Rod, if you're watching. <laughs> so I really, I, yeah, I did a happy dance in the parking lot when they gave it to me. I was, I was just over the moon happy. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, on my birthday, uh, Dennis had asked what I wanted to do, and of course I said, let's go shopping for yarn. Uh, let's go to Brooklyn General, and that was the plan. We went to Brooklyn General. Um, I did not see anything I liked, or I did, but then I was kind of like a little underwhelmed. I, like, I had some projects in mind that I wanted to shop, um, that I, you know, I had with the intention of, I, I had gone in there with the intention of buying yarns for a specific project or a couple of specific projects, but nothing really jumped out on me, jumped out on me, <laughs> nothing, no yarn jumped out on me, uh, no yarn jumped out at me. Um, so I was like, you know, but there is a yarn shop that I went to with some friends, uh, it's called Argyle and Dennis was just like, let's go there. Like, who are you? What have you done with my husband? Um, but yeah, so we ended up, we got some lunch at Whole Foods, um, and then we, because it was right by, it was, yeah, there was a Whole Foods near the place. Anyway, so we had lunch, then we made our way up to Argyle, um, and they have some Quince Co., uh, which is pretty much the only shop in, uh, in Brooklyn that offers Quince & Company, and I had been wanting to get this one colorway that Melody from the Mandarins podcast, who's also a, a pattern designer, had uh, designed her Blum shawl out of, and it was Quince & Co. Um, turn, which is 75% wool and 25% silk um, fingering weight, and in the Columbine color, which is a, a bright kind of terracotta pink, I want to say, but it's lovely. Um, but then they had this one, which is very similar. Uh, it's the Syrah colorway, and I put the two together, and you know, even Dennis said this one complements me a lot more than the Columbine colorway because it was a lot brighter, a lot more saturated, and this one, it's mauve, it's muted, and I love it. And it's named after wine, come on, yeah. So it was just a done deal right there. So I got two skeins of this, and then of course I offered to knit, you know, I told Dennis, I said, I wanna knit you something, I wanna knit you a new hat, um, pick something out, you know, and he, of course, picked something gray, something black, <laughs> but it's still a lovely color. Also, Quince & Co. It's in their uh, chickadee colorway, which is a, a sport weight yarn, and it's 100% American wool. So I have no idea what hat to knit for him. Uh, and there, I will say, after searching Ravelry, there are very few sport weight knit hats for men. Um, there are a couple, but those he did not really express an interest in. Like, first he likes cables, and then he's like, nah, I don't like the cable so much. I like the Fair Isle, but then the Fair Isle's too busy. I'm just gonna have to design him something, aren't I? So, we'll see how that works out. But, um, yeah, so, I have new yarn, yay. Uh, but, I do want to, he's like, I actually bought that for myself. He's like, you know, I know you wanted to buy a sweater's quantity worth of yarn or what have you. So when you find the sweater's quantity worth of yarn, let me know and I will, I will get that for you. I will pick up the tab. I'm like, you're awesome. But, um, yeah, that is still TBD. Nothing has jumped out at me, of course, um, yet, but, 
Um, I have a couple of sweaters that I want to knit. I have a couple of shawls that I want to knit. Um, and yeah, so no rush, no rush at all. Um, and I kind of want a serger now. So anyway, but yeah, that's, that's that. Um, so I think that is it for treat yourself. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So as far as spinning, no spinning this week. My heckle has not arrived yet, but it has been shipped. So I'm very excited about that. Um, that should be here on Friday. Uh, and I'm sure I'll post about it on social media because I do that like anyone does. Um, so, but yeah, anyway. Um, so I am going to move on to sewing. Uh, and if you have not seen the photos on Instagram yet, <laughs> I was very excited about this, uh, because I, as I mentioned, I was watching, um, in, what is, what is that podcast name? It's with Miss Lavelli. Da, 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 da. Inside number 23. Um, after I'd watched that podcast, I'm like, all right, I'm going to cut out my, I'm going to print out the, the pattern, cut out my pieces, cut out the fabric, and let's, let's get this done. Because I have had, I've been wanting a wrap dress for eons and eons. And I could not, I had a wrap dress a long time ago. And I wore it to death. It was made of, it was a black jersey material. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it, I wore it so much. It pilled and it had moth holes in it. And once it got the moth holes in it, I'm like, all right, it's done. Oh, darn. You're, you're, yeah. Anyway, but, uh, and since then I have not been able to find a wrap dress equal to it. Um, so of course I started sewing my own stuff and came across this one pattern, uh, that I found on sewover.com. It's called the ultimate wrap dress. I will try and insert a photo of the pattern image here. Um, but I was like, yes, that is the pattern. And I found the fabric on fabric.com and this is it. It's just a lightweight Jersey, uh, gray Heather, um, fabric. And it's actually, I would, I, I had this shirt. I still have a shirt by American apparel that I've had for years and years. And I wore this thing to death as well. It's already peeling as well. Thankfully the moths have not gotten to it, <laughs> but, um, it's a V-neck t-shirt. And I swear this is, pretty much the same material. Um, so I was just like, how cool would it be to have a wrap dress made out of this material that I essentially love to live in? Um, so yeah, I made it happen. I cut out the pieces one day and then the next day, which was yesterday, I just woke up early and started stitching it together. And I was like, all right, I'm only going to work on this for like maybe an hour. We'll see how far I get. But I just got so into it. I just, I think dedicated about four hours of my time yesterday to it and got it done. And I am super excited about it. Um, so yeah, I mean, one thing I'm very impressed with myself, I was very nervous. Well, first of all, um, I was nervous about sewing with Jersey to begin with that I, I think was kind of the thing that was holding me back because I heard things, Oh, you have to use special needles with it and everything. And I was like, all right, I really don't want to mess this up. But um, as soon as I got sewing with it, I did a couple of practice runs and I got the feel of the jersey. You don't want to tug on it or push it too much. You just want to like let it do its thing when it goes into the machine. Um, and I did go slowly at first uh, with the pedal. Like I just did da, 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 until like I got, I got it down. I was like, all right, this is how, how it behaves. Now we can go a little faster, um, if that makes any sense. But uh, one the other thing I was kind of like shaking in my boots about when I made this was the inset sleeves. I don't know if you can see that, but um, there's a seam right here. That's the thing about this fabric. You cannot see the seams very well at all, which is amazing. Um, but everything just lined up the way I did it. I just followed the directions, made sure everything lined up. I pinned it at the top. I pinned it at the bottom underneath the armpit. And then I just pinned, 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 pinned on this side. And then I just pinned, pinned, pinned on that side. And everything just matched up perfectly. And the other thing that I did, uh, I, you know how like the sewing machine over there has like this thing that just slides off. So you have to change the, the bobbin on the inside. I took that off just the, the plastic piece. So I had a narrower, um, surface when I was stitching it. So, and you know how like the sleeve is very narrow. It's a, just a narrow circle. Um, that made it a lot easier just to get it around, just like to get the stitches and go around the whole armhole. So if that helps anybody out, I mean, I highly recommend it. It's a great, um, 
technique, if you will, if you can call it a technique. But um, I found that to be incredibly helpful. And I had one sleeve in one go, that, no problems whatsoever. The second sleeve, I had a little pinch right there, but that was totally my error. So I just took a seam ripper, ripped it out a little bit, smoothed it out and stitched over it. But yeah, you can't see it. Um, the other thing about this, like the, uh, the sleeve, I rolled up the sleeves because originally the pattern has long sleeves, but I'm not a long sleeve wearing person. I am a total, I love short sleeves. Um, so I cut out the fabric anyway. And then, you know, when it came time to doing the sleeves, I actually just cut the arms. Um, but I feel like they are still quite long. Um, I mean, they got their quarter inch, which is fine. Uh, I haven't decided whether I want, I've just been rolling them up just, you know, because I kind of like the look of it, but um, I haven't decided whether or not I want to alter it to make them just like a t-shirt length uh, sleeve. Um, but yeah, and otherwise, uh, the, what do you call it? The interfacing on the inside, uh, because it's jersey material, it like, it, and it's a knit fabric, it, you know, just like with any stockinette, uh, swatch that you make or anything it just ro likes to roll up on itself and this fabric certainly likes to do that so I actually like as with any fabric and in interfacing and raw edges you either want to serge it or do a zigzag stitch and because I do not have a serger I <laughs> zigzag stitched all around the raw edges and that certainly helped it because um, I don't know if you can see but I don't even know if I want to do this on the podcast, but this is the interfacing. It just folds over and I just zigzagged along the edge and it, yeah, it just tucks in like that. And I did a little top stitching over here. So I don't think the pattern uh, called for top stitching along the neckline, but I did it anyway, only because the interfacing was popping out a little bit and I wanted to kind of weigh it down a little bit or have some kind of anchor. Um, but I will crank it up and so you can see, but yeah, so yeah, here's where it wraps around and then there's like a hole on the other side, like right there, which was really cool to make. I had a lot of fun doing this, um, just like top stitching around the hole and everything like that. So, um, but yeah, and it ties like so and it's a wrap dress. <laughs> so I am smitten with this thing. I want to make 20 more. I feel like the most cum cumbersome part of making this dress was the ties because they're long strips of fabric and you have to make sure that they're folded. Uh, and you know, cause I know Jersey likes to shift around. This is just out of working with it. This, this one time that I realized this, I got like, oh yeah, uh, Jersey likes to kind of do its own thing if you don't, if you're not careful. So yeah, I had to iron it uh, down to create a, a temporary crease and then fold it over and then pin it and then stitch like these long strips, if that makes any sense as well. Um, but yeah, so. I highly recommend this pattern. There were there, it's pretty much foolproof, and the pattern was so clear and easy to follow. Um, and yeah, I want to make like twenty more of these dresses because they are so comfortable. Um, it's like loungewear, but yeah, it's it, it's it's loungewear, but it's not. It's comfortable formal wear. I feel like, and you know, I don't feel like you know, because normally I just chuck a t-shirt on and some leggings and a skirt during the day, but I don't know. I could just lounge around in this all day. I don't know. Do, am I making any sense? I'm waxing poetic about it, but, um, yeah, I highly recommend the pattern. Um, and I'm already shopping for more Jersey fabric and yeah. So that's how she wrote. Um, I am, I know I talked about starting a sewing blog. Uh, that is in the works. I got the domain name. It's going to be called uh, House of Wool and Vine, <laughs> just, you know, a little play on words, but it's H-A-U-S, the German word for house. Um, so that's going to be a really fun project. I am not sure how many, how much I'm going to be updating it on a regular basis. I'm not sure if I'm going, I'm not sure if I'm going to be updating it on a regular basis or how frequently I'm going to be updating it, but, um, I definitely want to just start keeping track of my, my sewing progress, uh, and just a place to put all my, um, you know, photos of, my work and everything like that. So stay tuned for that. I will, I'm sure I'll announce it at some point or another. Um, there's nothing on the blog right now. Um, it's still being made. So, but yeah, anyway, I am going to move on to ask away because we have <laughs> several questions that I wanted to talk about or answer. A Hubbard on Ravelry asks, hi, Kristen. I love your podcast. Thank you. <laughs> um, I watch a few 
I watch a few and yours is one of my favorites. Thanks for the time and energy. You're so welcome. Um, my question is this, why are colors called colorways? I've never understood it. Why aren't they just called colors? It's a, a little thing, but I was hoping that you could clear it up for me. Thanks. Okay, I was curious too. I had no idea when you asked me that. So I did a little research and of course, immediately went to the dictionary to see what they had to say. Um, and I found a couple of definitions for it, uh, which kind of makes sense. Um, and Miriam, of course, you go to Miriam Webster and they basically just say a color or arrangement of colors. That really helps, right? So, but you get that it's an arrangement of colors. So, okay, it's not just a color, it's an arrangement. Um, and then I went to Urban Dictionary, uh, what, which, uh, which uh, states that, um, or defines it as one of many various configurations for the color scheme for shoes. <laughs> so for example, blue, white, and black, red, white are two different colorways for one shoe model. So when you get a pair of, you know, like sneakers and they, you know, you have one model of shoe, but they come in different colors or different combination of colors, that's a colorway. But originally I think it was intended for shoes. Um, but they do say the term is not limited to shoes, but that is the most common usage, commonly used in skateboarding. There you go. Um, but then you have Wiktionary, <laughs> another another lovely source for information. Um, it says that it's an art. Uh, the scheme of two or more colors in which a design is available. It is often used to describe variegated or ombre shades of color, print, yarns, fabric, or thread. It can also be applied to apparel, to wallpaper, and other interior design motifs, and to spe um, specifications for printed materials such as magazines or newspapers. So yeah, there you go. It's kind of like an arrangement of colors or a combination of colors and like yarn, um, it's not, no yarn is specifically just red. No yarn is specifically just blue. Even if it is like a solid color, it's just an, a combination like to get that solid red or that solid blue. Like it might have a little more green in it or it might have a little more blue in it or, you know, or uh, like a red might have a little more purple in it or, you know, it's never, it's a combination of colors that came together to create that specific red, um, or if, even with a variegated color. It's a arrangement of colors, having a party on one skin of yarn. <laughs> so um, if that makes any sense to you, I hope that helps answer your question. Um, I had, as I mentioned, I had no idea what it meant. So it's really good to finally figure that one out. So thank you for asking that. Very awesome question. So yeah, that is it for Ask Away. I'm going to move on to shop update. So uh, if you are not interested, I will see you next week. Happy knitting. But yes, I will be having a shop update tomorrow, uh, Friday, February 5th, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And yeah, I just want to say thank you to everybody who uh, showed up for my first official, uh, whoops, <laughs> first official, um, international shop update last Saturday. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who purchased yarn from me. Uh, and yeah, it really means a lot. So thank you. Um, but yeah, tomorrow the, the shop will be restocked with more woolly goodness. So um, let me get the yarn to show you. Okay, so I don't have my basket today. It's over there, but um, so there will be more colorways because I'm going to do more dyeing later on today, but this is what I have so far. Um, I will have some Venus fly trap. This is it on Narwhal. I will have it on other bases as well. Um, this is Black Pearl. Um, I will have some Enjoy the Silence. I will have some Gashley Crumb. This is it on Footsie. And then I will also have some uh, Love Song, which is what I'm knitting my socks out of, my monkey socks. And I have some experimental colorways, some one-of-a-kind that so will be in the shop. Um, I will have this one. I have not named it yet, but it just has like some, it's like a natural color with brown speckles and red speckles. It's a really interesting color play on here. Um, and then I have this one, which is on my Smitten DK base, another experimental, one of a kind, uh, kind of reminds me of fruitcake. <laughs> I, I was just having a little too much fun with the speckles and seeing, you know, what would happen if I did this. And this is what happened when I did that. Um, so yeah, that will be available as well. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try and have some more, uh, jolted rose. I'm going to dye up some more, um, goodness. Oh, yes, and I will also have um, some succulents in the shop as well. 
Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, I haven't decided what I'm going to be dying today. I want to have more fairy hair. I definitely want to have some more, um, jilted rose and outlander and maybe I'll dye those today. Yeah. So those may or may not be in the shop tomorrow, but I hope you can make it. Um, and I also want to announce, I'm not officially announcing it because I'm still working up the logistics of it, but, um, I will be having a yarn club, uh, kicking off. I will, should I announce it now? It's going to be a three month yarn club inspired, colorways inspired by Edward Gorey. So I'm probably going to announce it either tomorrow or the following week. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, I will split that up into two shop updates just to give people a fair chance to, um, sign up for the club because I know it's hard to, sometimes not everybody can make the shop update. So I will do my best to make that fair as possible. Um, and then I'm going to have one deluxe subscription, I, I, not one, but like, um, five or six, uh, deluxe, um, subscriber options, uh, which will not only come with three skeins, but also a project bag and some other goodies. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm very excited about it. Uh, if you're not familiar with Edward Gorey, I highly suggest you Google him. He's an American illustrator who's no longer with us, but he has a very like macabre style, very dark, but humorous at the same time. Um, I actually have a calendar on my wall over there from a gift from Jenny of the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast. She saw it and she's like, this made me think of you, Kristen. So I love it. Um, yeah. So anyway, thank you, Jenny. It's, it's awesome. Yay. Um, but yeah, as you can tell, I'm a huge Edward Gorey fan. So I think that is it for this week. Uh, I'm going to move on to leather, which is where I talk about what's going on my, in my life. Um, aside from my birthday, <laughs> nothing else much has been happening. As I mentioned, I went to visit my grandmother on Saturday. It's, it, it was a long time since I last saw her. I think it was in spring that we went to visit her. Um, but it's very hard to get up to visit her. Um, just because she's like an hour and a half out of the city and I feel like every weekend there's something else going on and it's, you know, yeah, it, it's tough getting up to see her basically. Um, but we had such a great time. Um, she's getting a little, <laughs> it's funny, she's, you know, her memory is getting a little foggy, you know, I'll be sitting with her and occasionally she'll just forget, not forget who I am, she'll know, but think I'm like somebody else, you know, like she'll think I'm her daughter or, you know, my aunt or my mom and I'm like, no, no, it's Kristen, you know, and, and this is Dennis, you know, <laughs> so, and she, you know, she realizes what's happening, so, and she feels silly about it, but I'm like, you know, don't worry about it, you're fine, but she always remembers that I knit, <laughs> that I knit and that I dye yarn, and she goes, how's the business going, so that's really fun, um, and that's, you know, kind of endearing uh, whenever I see her. But um, yeah, and she still has a lot of my hand knit stuff that I made for her. Um, and yeah, so that was really great to see her finally. And, uh, after, and then again, as I mentioned, uh, we had dinner with my in-laws. That was always, that's great to see, <laughs> it was great to see them as well. We went out to a really fun restaurant um, and had an amazing dessert. Amazing, yeah, anyway. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think, yeah. And Dennis and I went out to eat for my birthday. Uh, we went to this new place that opened up in the neighborhood. I had octopus again, went in Rome. Um, and yeah, it was just a really, really fun weekend. Uh, and this weekend, I'm trying to think what else is going on. Yeah, yeah, pretty much low key. I think we're gonna get some brunch with friends. Um, I'm looking forward to getting my hackle and having fun with that and the like, so. Yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit all over the place with this segment today, but anyway, that no news is good news, right? Anyway, so um, that said, I will leave you with that. Happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Bye.